What kind of inaccurate information do the credit bureaus report? Hi, this is Consumer Protection Attorney Bill Clanton. I've helped hundreds of people deal with inaccurate credit reports, bad background checks, debt collection harassment, and all nature of consumer-related matters. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about the five most common incorrect information type of cases that we see under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Uh, I'll talk some more about your remedies under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, but if you've had inaccurate information on your credit report, if you dealt with it before, please leave a comment to this video. We want to find out what people are seeing out there, and your comments could help other people who are watching this video. Okay, so the five most common types of inaccurate information on a credit report are the first most common is old information. Now, when a credit account is closed, it can stay on your credit report for seven years and then it is required to come off of your credit report. Accounts that are older, older than seven years and appearing on your credit report are obsolete or old information that do not belong on your credit report. Oftentimes, they still are there. Um, any other information more than seven years old, except a bankruptcy which can stay in there 10 years. Um, similarly, it should all fall off after seven years. Okay, uh, mixed files. Mixed files have got their own video. I'm going to put a little bit in here about them uh, because they're good to know about. If you are a um, junior and your father has the same name or you have the same name um, as your mother, then you may have a mixed file. Twins, it's very common. I get calls from twins who have mixed files. What happens is, if, if you grew up down the street from somebody who had the same name as you, then there's a chance your files are mixed. Uh, and what a mixed file means is that information from their file bleeds over into your file, and information from your file goes to their file. In the worst of these cases, um, one person has good credit and the other person has bad credit, and the bad credit goes over onto the good credit file and the good credit falls off of the good credit file and in, in these cases are very hard to untangle and, and, and figure out well, who belongs to what accounts belong on which report. Um, it's very hard for the bureaus to untangle these. It's a problem they've known about since the at least 1970, maybe even, and they've been on notice of it since 1983. Uh, we've, we're, we're working on videos on putting up some of these um, legislative history and um, some of the court decisions on these cases that have told the bureaus to find these problems and fix them, and they still haven't done it. Okay, reporting anything incorrectly is another very common violation, misstating a balance, uh, misstating the age of a, an account. Sometimes this is called re-aging, and they will um, backdate the, or, or move the date of the, um, what they call data first delinquency forward, so they can report it longer, so they get more uh, years, so they, start, they push the seven years ahead. Um, misstating this status of an account. The status of an account pays on time, um, late, 30, 60, 90, 120 days late, uh, in bankruptcy, um, closed. Those are all statuses. There's a, there's a whole bunch more statuses, but if they are reporting the wrong status about an account on your credit report, then that could be a violation of the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Um, an inaccurate payment history. If you look at your credit report, you'll see each account on there has a payment history. There's oftentimes mistakes in these payment histories, and those can those are a common violation of the Fair Credit Reporting Act. And then listing you as the debtor when you're just an authorized user. Now, this takes a little bit of discussion about the difference between a debtor and an authorized user, or a primary user and an authorized user. Now. Uh, Primary users will often add an authorized user to their account. They're given a, the authorized user is often given a credit card, and they can make charges on that card. And the credit the, and the authorized user gets the benefit of the primary user's good credit score and good credit history because it goes on to the authorized user's account. So an authorized user will um, use that to increase their credit score, get them uh, started, and. and get them off to a good start with credit, or to increase their score in general. Now, when a primary user files bankruptcy, then the authorized user, the reporting of that account on the authorized user should disappear. The authorized users will have called us where they have got a bankruptcy reporting on 
their credit report, but they never filed bankruptcy. It's because the primary user filed bankruptcy. And what's supposed to happen then is it's supposed to be erased from the authorized user's account. It should no longer appear on their credit report. And it still does. And if it does, then that's a violation of the Fair Credit Reporting Act. OK, I could go on for, for days about all the different types of inaccuracies on credit reports and the stuff we see. It's a crazy world out there. And I'd love to hear your comments to see what's going on in your world. Um, but if you have one of these violations, if there are, if there is inaccurate information on your credit report, you need to dispute it. You need to dispute it in writing. Um, I talk about why doing it in writing is so important, um, but it's very important to get a written dispute off to them and see if they correct it. Um, you need to dispute it with the bureaus. We've got the addresses in another video. Um, if they fail to correct it after you dispute it, then they're on notice and you have got a definitely got a case against the credit bureaus. Now, the credit bureaus get sued all the time and they are looking for cases that they can appeal or they can make good law on. And so it's important that if you decide you want to pursue a bureau for a violation of the Fair Credit Reporting Act, that you find an experienced attorney who can handle this. Um, give us a call. We're happy to refer you to another attorney who, if, if you're outside of our area, then we can refer you to another attorney who can handle that case for you. We want to make sure that you have a great lawyer who's going to work for your interests and is going to make sure you're going to be in good hands. So I appreciate you watching this video. I, I hope you subscribe to this channel. Um, every subscription you get helps these videos reach more people so we can help more people. Um, please like this video and thanks again.